Wow. How's it going? <laughs> well, obviously, my name is Rain Dove. I'm a model activer, uh, activer, <laughs> activist, actor, and gender capitalist. And I am nervous as heck, but I'm here for a reason. So. <laughs> Now, if there are any journalists in the audience and you're wondering, oh shit, what pronoun do I use for this person? Um, a pronoun is just a sound for me and all I'm listening for in that sound is positivity. So be creative. You can even call me it if you want to. Now, I'm just gonna get a little more comfortable and make you guys a little bit more comfortable. Take off some things. I feel like, according to my birth certificate, this is what I should be wearing, technically. Let's just get this down here. Oh yeah, that's so nice. Little red dress. And a clicker, that's nice. <clears throat> Better. So, cat in a bra, you have to go with that. This was the freest point in my life. <laughs> See that little face, kind of like, I had no expectations. I was just a lonely sperm, traveling with about 250 million other sperm. Things were pretty great back then. Uh, no one told me what to wear or how to be or how to dress. And um, I started out life a winner. I mean, I beat 250 million other sperm to get to this egg. It's a race that's bigger than 4.9 thousand times the size of the New York City Marathon. So uh, yeah, I pretty much shot out the gate and just you know, did what I gotta do, and that was awesome. See, I was doing just fine until I popped out of the vagina, and uh, then the doctors uttered three simple words that would shackle me into my first social prison. It's a girl! Ugh. The minute they said those words, I was no longer simply me. I suddenly became she. And at that point, I also became measured against everything a she was supposed to be. How I dress, talk, act, love, my level of attractiveness. <laughs> I know, guys, calm yourselves. Um, even how I gained or respect or trust. The path to obtain my wildest dreams was suddenly divided in half and filled with potholes of societal pressures that urged me to go in a certain direction, all because of what was right for my genitals. Now, here's the thing. As a she, here's how I measured up. It wasn't pretty. I found out I was actually pretty low on the totem pole. There's me, so soft, so sweet. That's my mother, big shout out to mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, she's a good looking woman. Um, see, the thing is, is I looked around on television, on billboards and in magazines, and I just didn't see the she that was me. I didn't see any girl that looked like me. And I'm gonna quote a lot of times when I say girl or guy. That's for a different TED talk, but I'm not really into those kinds of labels. See, I was tall and I was muscular. I grew up on a farm. That, check out that swimsuit bottle. Awesome. Oh man, yeah, sports, definitely pretty awesome at that. Uh, fashion sense on point. Um, and uh, I had a lot of weird haircuts. In fact, um, I actually aesthetically looked a lot more like my first boyfriend in high school. <laughs> uh, see that right there, the resemblance? Sometimes I wonder if I dated them just for pure narcissism, you know, it's just like, I mean, look at that, just one more time, look at that, oh, yeah, oh. We're gonna leave that creepy face up there for one second. <laughs> and because of these things, I grew up thinking, I guess I'm an ugly girl. Maybe I wasn't meant to be the housewife material, and maybe I wasn't meant to be arm candy. I figured out that maybe the she that I was supposed to be was the girl who survives the apocalypse and goes out on the escapades with her motorcycle and her shotgun and her German shepherd. That was my place in life. I was gonna be like Resident Evil. You know, that was me. Yeah, you know, I'm not a housewife. I'm just gonna shoot some zombies. That's my destiny right there. Now, be real with me, okay? And, and some of you guys might be like, you know, crazy miracle workers here, but raise your hand if you chose the body that you were born in. I'm not talking trans and I'm not talking about like plastic surgery or anything weird like that. I just literally mean, before you popped out of that vagina, did you choose the body that you came out in? No. We didn't choose this. It's not my fault that I was born into this vessel and it's not your fault that you were born into this vessel. 
So why is society punishing me? Why are they punishing you? Why are they getting in your way because of it? If it's not your fault, why are they limiting you? Now, fast forward. When I was 19, I became a wilderness firefighter. And this was my part of my attractive crew right here. Check it out. Um, I know a lot of you guys might think that that's me right there with the chainsaw, kind of like looking kind of douchey doing this. Um, no, that's not me. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could be that miracle worker. See, I walked into a room of predominantly men, these men, okay? And the first thing they did was call me he. My whole life I thought I was an ugly girl. I'd never been mistaken as a he before. I would have corrected them, but then I saw the way they were talking about the women in the room, and they were measuring their usefulness based on how attractive they were. And I realized I had a choice. Be the ugly girl or be a dude. So I decided to be a dude. And I was going to tell them the truth later, you know, like work really hard and then like be like, surprise, haha, <laughs> shoulder punch. Um, but then later turned into 11 months. So it was a little bit of time passed um, before that situation happened. <laughs> right there. <laughs> And um, one time in the middle of firefighting, I was actually celebrating with all the men, no women allowed, and we were around the fire, and somebody said something that I would consider to be the most manly thing that has ever been said. We're all drinking whiskey kind of illegally and like <laughs> hanging out around the fire, and one guy says, if I die, I need you to promise me that you are going to go back to the place that you last saw me and scoop up some of my ashes and send it home to my mother. I was like, shit, got serious, man. <laughs> we were just sitting there, I felt like a chest hair pop out. Um, and then everybody took a swig of whiskey. And then they all did something I did not expect. They stood up, walked to the edge of this sandstone cliff in the middle of the desert, and they all started to pee off the cliff together in solidarity. I'd never peed in front of these guys before, ever. Usually they thought, I think they probably thought like I had to poop a lot because I just like always, <laughs> you know, went into a place where I could hide or squat. So suddenly I found myself shoulder to shoulder with these guys, kind of like, okay, I guess I got to do this. And I took two hands, and I'm kind of like funneling it out, <laughs> trying to get it out away from me. Um, and it got all over me. And uh, it gained me the nickname Hobo, which um, in America means homeless person, <laughs> because I smelled like urine for a week. Later on, when they found out that I was a woman, they said, that's impossible. And the medic was like, why? And they're like, well, uh, we saw his dick. He had to hold it with two hands. <laughs> and my response today is that a dick doesn't make a man a man. Um, especially at noon. Okay. <laughs> at first, I actually thought that being perceived as a guy was pretty great. I was like, I got a golden ticket. I found that maybe it was like a superpower, you know? Like, the ability to be a young white man in America. <laughs> which is a pretty damn awesome power for most things. But then over those 11 months, while I certainly did experience an improved quality of life, I also began to experience disadvantages that I'd never experienced as a woman, and that a lot of guys don't really feel like they can talk about. For starters, I wasn't allowed to express unapologetic sadness or fear. I couldn't express these things, and if I did, I better be able to just suck it up and show that I'm able to resolve. So if I cry, I have to be like, but don't worry about me, bruh. <laughs> you know, shoulder punch. I couldn't argue full force with another female firefighter. So if a female firefighter and I were having a conflict, she could yell at me. She could even slap me across the face. And she would be applauded for standing up to herself against a tall white guy. But if I were to slap her across the face, being perceived as male, I would probably go to jail. <laughs> and then my life would be ruined. Now, by the way, nobody should ever slap anyone across the face, like, ever. You know, don't, don't do it. I'm not promoting violence here. <laughs> but if you have to, like, in a defense, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, and lastly, I realized, um, and there are a lot of things I realized, but these are the top three. I realized that, man, I didn't get any freebies, okay? As a woman, you know, free drinks, like free entry into like places, and like, you know, sometimes you can have like these meltdowns and people are like, it's okay, you know? No freebies as a dude, none. I was expected to be able to pay my way into everything, and not just pay my way into everything, but also have money in the chamber to cover someone else. I had to have the ability to pull someone else's weight, just in case. So what I'm saying, guys, is, you know, 
Some of you may have it a lot easier because of your male status, but I'm telling you, you don't have it easy either. And a lot of people don't talk about that. So what does this mean? It basically means no matter how we express ourselves in gender or sex, man, society's gonna screw us over. <laughs> we are screwed, it's not fair. My golden ticket turned out to be just another flawed form of life that I could live. So I decided to say, fuck it. Fuck it, I'll be both, I'll be all. I'll be whatever I have to be to get the most out of my life because I don't have time to be disadvantaged. I don't have time to stand in a line and be polite and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a girl, I can't do that. Or like, oh yeah, lady, it's okay, like, you know, you're fine, go ahead of me. You know, I don't have time for that shit. I got important things to do on this planet, okay? And now I make a living off from that, men that mentality. What I did was, first I studied the common factors society affiliates with different genders and sexes, and I began to emulate those qualities in um, various situations to get the most out of them. So, when I was in a situation that was more advantageous to be seen as female, I would arch my back, soften my gestures, and raise my voice. Hi, how's it going? Nice to see you. All right. <laughs> when I was in a situation that it was seen as more beneficial to be male, I brought my shoulders forward, I made a lot of eye contact. I made sure that everything I said was intentional. I lowered my voice. Put out my dick sometimes. I'm just kidding, I didn't do that, but <laughs> sometimes you have to. I mean, you know, you're in the wrong situation, okay. Um, and suddenly, when I started doing this every day, my life exploded in a huge way. And after I accidentally became a fashion model, separate TED talk, <laughs> and actor, um, I found myself being able to portray all sexes and genders, making twice the amount of money I would have as an ugly girl, and twice the amount of money I would have as a decent looking guy. I mean, I'm just not meaning to brag, but you know, hey. <laughs> Look at this face, I mean, right? Okay. So, now, when you Google my name, you're gonna see pictures like this. You're gonna see some photos like this. Check that out right there, that's nice. Um, no real alcohol in that, though. Um, this one, that's the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, this one right here, nice little lingerie. Uh, this one, nice, it's a makeup campaign. That's my first Vogue Italia uh, shot. Oh, and sometimes this. Google Images and I, we're like having a problem because this thing, when you type in Rain Dove, sometimes it's at the top of the image thing. I don't know how many people are looking up this pigeon, but it is very fucking famous. It is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Now, after a period of time in the industry, okay, I decided to coin this term, I mean, this way of life, and I called it gender capitalism. Now, gender capitalism is when you recognize society's perception of gender and make use of it in the most advantageous way. You capitalize on it. For me, that literally means presenting myself as what society deems to be male or female in a given situation to get the most out of it, because I don't have time to fuck around, it's your fault if you think I'm something else. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of how I would use, personally, with my superpower, gender capitalism. Titanic, long, sad movie, but walk with me here, okay? If I had gone on to the Titanic during this time period, I would have gotten a job as a male deckhand, making sure that my clothes are nice and baggy, make that eye contact, lower that voice, bring those shoulders forward, and I would have gotten paid three times more than the highest paid female working position on that ship. However, the minute that ship was sinking, and they said women and children first, I'm like off, I'm on to those like, boats. I am out of there because then at that point, if you're a dude, you have to stay behind and die. I'm not gonna do that. Are you kidding me? I didn't make all this money as a deckhand to have to put up with that shit. <laughs> um, and that is gender capitalism. Now, I don't feel bad about it. Some people would be like, hey, you know, you're kind of supporting these gender stereotypes and supporting this oppression, but that's the complete opposite. I fight stereotypes and oppression every day just by living unapologetically and letting other people around me live unapologetically. I ask the question, when did we take science and turn it into shackles? When? When was this such a big factor, this whole situation here? When did social opinion become fact that we have to live by? When did it become so dire to conform to a homogenous binary standard? At one point, you know, it's true. The human race, I mean, we needed to survive. We needed to identify each other on, like, genitalia because we literally, pun intended, needed to know what we were fucking with. 
because the humans only lived for like 20, 30 years at one point. I mean, we had a hard time. We had to get society going. You know, we had to build up the population. That was something we designed so that we could have a more efficient population. But the human race has enough people now. The population is high enough. And in fact, we have dominated the planet to such a point that we are choking it with our needs. This social design that was once constructed for efficiency has now not only become inefficient, but has become detrimental to our well-being and ability to further our species. We don't need to grow our population anymore, okay? We need to feed the population we have. We need to water the population we have. We need to shelter the population we have. So we need to redesign society to maximize our potential to do that, which means getting out of the intellectual way of every single human so we can be the best we can to solve these problems. It is that simple. So what does it mean for you? Question on my talk. There's a little talking point right there, just taking a pivot. Well, not everybody here would deem themselves androgynous. I just want to say, every human is androgynous. Androgyny is not the opinion of yourself, it's the other people's opinion of you. And everyone here is androgynous. You should be ambiguous. However, right now, the way the society stands, a lot of you probably can't be able to seamlessly walk through and pass as male or female on a straight hard line. But being a gender capitalist doesn't mean that you have to do that, and it also doesn't mean that you have to not identify with your own gender. You don't have to be like, I am now an it. You can still say you're a she, you can say you're, you're whatever you want, you can identify with whatever elements of you that you want to. It's just that you recognize how society sees gender, and you capitalize off of it. And there are only two rules to do this, it is a very simple thing. Rule number one, just gonna put that there, Eliminate the limits. Stop telling yourself you can't do something because of who or what you are. And stop getting in other people's way of exceeding what society tells they are. I'm gonna put that up there as a plug. Okay. <laughs> Look, we were taught at birth to undercut ourselves, okay? We're taught not to think selfishly. And I know that a lot of us don't feel comfortable about bragging about ourselves or doing things to show off how awesome we are. Right? You're not allowed to be like, oh, I'm awesome. Because some other person's gonna be like, douchebag, you know? <laughs> but the most selfless thing you can do is be a gender capitalist. Because when other people get in your way, they're not getting just in your way, they're getting in the way of all the good you have to offer them. So they're getting in their own way. And when you get in the way of other people, you're getting in the way of all the good those people can offer you. You're getting in your own way. So rule number one, get the fuck out of your way. Get out the way, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. Rule number two, if you see something, say something. Now, this slogan is very popular around the world, it's used for a lot of things, but it's popular for a reason. And it's as simple as it sounds. We need to be advocates for each other for our coworkers, for our family, for the person that we're dating, hold them to equal standards, no matter what sex or gender they are, okay? Even for strangers, because those people might save your life one day. Those people might hire you one day. Those people might make the bread that you eat in the morning, you don't know. You have to lift them up, and you have to speak up for them. It's that simple, two rules. You do this, and you're gonna stop missing out on a whole half of your life that you're missing. It's not fair. Your life, you've been cheated. You lost a whole half of potential, a whole half of camaraderie, a whole half of you. And you had to fight damn hard to get to where you are right now. And it shouldn't be that hard. But you have to navigate through all these social pressures and it's not fair. So to bring it back to the beginning, let's imagine a new world. A world where when you're born, they're not like, it's a girl, ha <laughs> ha, or it's a boy. They say, it's a you. And you're taught about yourself in a scientific way, not a social way. Instead of saying, ah, oh, you're more likely to act like this because you're a male or a female, people will say to you, okay, um, you have these hormonal levels, 
You have these chemicals in your body, you have these chromosomal elements, and you have these different physiological attributes. You may be likely to experience life in this particular way, but it's up to you. If you were taught about how your body works as a unique machine, things would be different. If you learned about you, you wouldn't feel like, oh, I'm an angry girl because you're not like all the other girls. Or I'm, an ang I'm like a weak guy because you're comparing yourself to all the guys. You would compare yourself only to you. We aren't meant to be compared to anyone else, okay? We aren't meant to look like anyone else. Look in the audience, everyone is so different. We don't look like ants. We don't look like grains of sand on the beach. And even those things are different when looked at underneath a microscope. You are not this vessel. Any person at any time, you could lose any of your senses, sight, smell, sound, taste, touch. You could lose any body part. You could lose your dick, okay? You could lose your tits, you could lose anything. All of the sexual organs, internal and external. And when that happens, if that happens, heaven forbid that happens, you still are you. There's this thing that goes beyond the body, and that's you. That's the thing that's meant to be compared to each other. Us. Not this. So, it's that simple. We are not this. So get the fuck out of your way, and stop letting opinions get in the way of the fact that this is your life, and you should be doing everything you can to be the best that you can be. Thank you. <laughs>